Hey, this is Cody Henry, and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. This is beat paper, paper covers rock. Rock beats is a shame, covers nonstop, never know what new kind of guests that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot, could be rock, folk, country, or hip-hop, jazz. All kind of folks that he has, could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh on the Rock Paper Podcast. Double decker, fudge round, rolling round town, shame coming at you live and direct from ground zero. He's your hero, he's your bestie, Rock Paper Podcast with Shane Presley. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out on Zoom with Cody Henry. Welcome back to the show, my friend. What's up, man? It's been a long time. Yeah, been now <laughs> way too long. I'm uh, uh, looking forward to this, man. Yeah, yeah. Like so, our, our first one we did. Uh, I think that was the first time I met you, Shane. Maybe, maybe I met you earlier than that, but like it, it was a. Uh, Episode 69 with the Sophisticated Babies. Hey-o. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was kind of a uh, it was kind of a cool time. I, I, I mean, <laughs> you just said, like, let's not make this the Shane Presley show. But like, uh, <laughs> but Shane, this, I think this is around the time you were getting ready to kind of launch off on your own in the podcast. I think that was I think we were one of your first ones that you did with just yourself. Right. And then like a week after. You asked me if I would if I wouldn't mind co-hosting with you when we talked we talked to uh, Hilly Fitz and uh, Drew Lance. Yeah, so, man. Uh, and I had a lot of fun with that, man. That was that was that was a lot of fun. And then uh, I uh, I ruined it for you, and you're like, "Now nah, I'm going back to being alone." <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So so everybody who likes Rock Paper Podcast, just when it's just Shane like this, you have me to thank because yeah. he's like, uh, "No more co-hosts." <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, man, lots of fun. That was that was that was cool, and and uh, uh, it's and, and of course we've seen each other a lot since oh, yeah. since then. But like, it's great to be back on the podcast, man. Thank yeah, you for man. having me. Absolutely, yeah, uh, yeah. That was a that was a nice surprise that day. I do remember that because uh, that was actually um, like the first time I met Hillary too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I known Drew a little bit, uh, but uh, yeah. So like. I met Hillary by accident. I think I tagged her on Facebook uh, when I do doing, doing those list of shows. I think I tagged her on accident uh, as somebody uh, opening a show or something. Cause usually that's kind of how it goes. I'll start following somebody online and then uh, just kind of keeping an eye on whether, where they're playing at and stuff and they're keep their, you know, up their music and everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I accidentally tagged uh, her opening a show and she, she sends me a message and she's like, Hey, uh, you know, I appreciate the, uh, that, but I'm not on that show. And I'm like, Oh, whoops. And then I was like, so I was like, well, let me introduce myself. I'm Shane. And, <laughs> you know, and then like, and then I said, well, I do this podcast. It'd be fun to hang out and talk. And she goes, okay, well, can you do it like next week? Cause I'm getting ready to leave, uh, for this, uh, whatever she went to like the Island or into the woods and, uh, yeah, whatever, she talked, like, she, yeah, she talked about that on the podcast. She went down to yeah. like, uh, like South America or something like yeah. that for a couple of weeks, yeah. uh, some kind so, of retreat thing she did or I don't yeah. know what all the details, but she was, uh, it was, uh, it was anyway, it was cool to a cool way to, you know, meet somebody for the first time is on the recording. So it's like, yeah. Well, and also, Hey man, that, that hookup, uh, uh, her and I, uh, uh, collaborated a couple, maybe a month or so after that, because, uh, she was recording an album. And, right. uh, so I ended up kind of, kind of writing horn parts for, uh, metamorphosis and i played trombone on uh you done wrong and you should have done better i had like yeah, man. you know plunger stuff so so like uh you know she knew me because of you so yeah. so look at look at what you've 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 done for us yeah. <laughs> you know you're connecting people right and stuff so yeah, yeah she's she's still doing a good job and everything i see she's out playing and everything down at the grand L and stuff so yeah. very cool yeah very yeah. cool uh yeah man but uh yeah since that day um obviously uh that was what sh- I was like, uh, well, six years, maybe something. I think it was about six years ago. It's either, it's probably 2000. I, I want to say it was before I was in Funky Butt. So it was probably 2015, you know, because right. that's, that's the year we kind of started playing live with sophisticated babies. Yeah. So, and, uh, but yeah, that was a fun night for sure. And sophisticated babies have since, uh, <laughs> become one of my 
absolute favorites. Uh, you played. Oh, thanks, uh, man. You played uh, one of my birthday parties, uh, yes. even, and um, uh-huh. I just uh, was that was the f- fourth one at Old Rock House. I think you guys were a part that, of. That was a, yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the most entertaining acts in town for sure. Like it's uh, you and uh, Adam Hooky, obviously uh, doing a tuba and ukulele duo. And if anybody hasn't seen that act in t- yet, uh, you, uh, so hopefully we can get you guys back on a stage sometime I, soon. We, yeah, we'd love. Actually, uh, we're working out a date with uh, uh, with uh, Zach Murphy, uh, and uh, he's getting us getting us at uh, the venue he works at. So uh, uh, I'll give you the details on that when it comes up. But like, uh, <laughs> but but yeah, so we're we're getting ready. To, sophisticated babies will write again. <laughs> you know, be sure of that. All right. uh, and uh, it's it's hard not to have that band going because. Uh, uh, you know, Adam, uh, one of my best friends musically and, uh, and just, you know, and plain old personal life, you know? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep doing that with, with, uh, sophisticated babies for sure. Yeah, man. Um, well, I think, uh, so anyway, we've known each other. We go way back now already. We're old friends and that's what's, it's been a lot of fun to <laughs> right. follow your musical adventures, uh, yeah. Again, through sophisticated babies and funky butt brass band. I got to catch you guys the other night at the Fox and which wow. was a, a heck of a good time. Yeah, it was. Th- thanks for coming out to that, man. It was a, that, that was a lot of fun because what a, what a beautiful place and, you know, and <laughs> yeah. you know, don't get to play there very often. Do you, you know? Yeah, man. I was, uh, that was just a real nice treat. I mean, it was, a, it, you know, it's a, it's a little weird, especially for our side of the stage. Uh, you know, being out there, it was very, uh, the Fox did, you know, everything by the book. They were very, uh, you know, but it's just very, it's a different way of seeing a show now, you know, it's like having yes. all the pr- procedures in in place and everything and very, um, you know, everything's roped off and going certain one way on all the aisles. And like, it was just like, you know, yeah, like it's cool being out here, but like, it's just like, man, I, I can't wait to not have to have all that stuff you know it's like where we can actually just for know, sure get, get back to the old days yeah yeah the fox theater man like uh so i've it was fun to play it in that capacity last friday with uh with funky butt because i hadn't really played there like like that you know like right. in a in a fun rock band like that it's it, well i sorry that's that was i shouldn't have said rock band like that because the, the next thing i'm gonna say is like uh because I've, I've been there before with uh uh the St. Louis Music Union uh, uh, books people over there for for if they need extra musicians and whatever. And I, uh, aside from doing like this like Rat Pack show, like a you know actually like musical there for for two weeks or whatever, I did uh, Warren Haynes uh, Gar Symphonic Cel- uh, Garcia Sec- uh, Symphonic Celebration or something like that. I think is what it was called. So <laughs> and. Uh, and and man, you know, so you say like you're talking about how it's all yeah. Of course, it's roped off because of the right. pandemic. Right. But but it is a very you know like the the people the volunteers that run the place like you know run a pretty a pretty tight ship. Yeah. But playing that Warren Haynes show <laughs> at the uh, at the at the Fox, like I park there, you know, like gig starts at eight or something like that. I'm parking at like at seven, and there's a bunch of like hippies uh, uh uh tailgating in the parking lot getting ripped before the show and, <laughs> and then uh you know the show starts at eight o'clock we go into dark star you know and uh freaking uh there's like nobody in the crowd you're like what the hell is going on you know like where the heck are these people <laughs> and they're like about 8 15 8 20 they're slowly trickling in it was a sold out show i mean every every seat was was filled but it, it looked like it looked like it did uh last friday during the pandemic with yeah. funky bud <laughs> and uh and uh man uh there's one dude in the there's there's a couple funny things like there's one dude up in the balcony that uh uh i could hear what he was saying but he but he just never like found like a hole to say it in and everything are we, are we, is it okay to curse on the podcast sure it's on the internet <laughs> so, of course yeah so like we're <laughs> we're getting ready to play the director's like you know getting ready to to count us in and you hear off you know warren fucking hates <laughs> <laughs> it's the fox man <laughs> you know it's like and uh it's it's that and then there's like i i remember 
like seeing some dude walking down the middle in like shorts and like sandals and he's took a sh- he's taking his shirt off and he's walking down the aisle and everything and the ushers are like you know please go back to your seat <laughs> put your shirt back on you know it's these nice nice volunteer uh yeah. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen they're usually retirees and everything they're very sweet you know and and <laughs> it's like having them wrangle all these <laughs> all these deadheads and everything was a was a really fun time <laughs> yeah man i bet but uh i've got my own fair share of uh stories of wr- <laughs> wrangling deadheads that uh, work in the door down at oyster bar all the uh jake's leg shows and everything else down there it was like it's uh some wild nights man yeah man uh hey if, if you're okay with going into it uh one of the <laughs> We're we're gonna talk about a couple of, like tunes that I I wrote, and uh, one of them happened at the Oyster Bar. Yeah, maybe we could maybe we could go into that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so uh, we we uh, we mentioned Funky Butt, um, and you guys just put out a a new record in uh, in 2020. Yes, um, yeah. it, it was the it was the 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 album that we weren't able to really promote because March hit and you know right <laughs> missed our opportunity it feels like you know yeah yeah it was uh definitely a hard year uh for for uh for promotion you know and everything just it's but there was a definitely some people put out some records in that time yeah. and i'm excited i think because i think 2021 i think there's gonna be a lot of great records coming out this year too from people writing records yeah. in 2020 so absolutely uh, but you guys released on, um your new record onward uh mm-hmm. and uh that's uh uh, available now digitally everywhere. You also have a uh, CD and vinyl, which I picked up a copy on vinyl at the awesome. uh, Fox show. Very cool. Those are very limited. So if you, if you want one of those folks, you got to get those quick. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is super cool. Uh, this first time funky butts been on vinyl, right? So yeah, yeah, yes, yes, it is. Uh, so that's uh, a nice treat for sure. Um, mm-hmm. but you were saying that, uh, you wrote, uh, El Nino Benito. Right. Yes. You yeah, El Nino, yeah, El Nino Bonito, and uh, um, I wrote I wrote three of them myself, and then uh, two of them I wrote one with uh, Adam Hookie and one with Austin Sibolsky. Uh So uh, it's a uh, so a little bit of collaboration and a little bit of just songs that that uh, I kind of had had somewhat written, you know, and everything, but I finally flushed them out when I got into Funky Butt. So. Um, but uh you know some of some of them are as ran- like dive for instance is, is like a uh it's a theme song i wrote for a korean anime that never saw the light of day they were looking for like you know like okay we're checking in with netflix we're gonna we we think we're gonna be streaming sometime in the next couple months and then like it just never happened <laughs> and i was i was like oh man this is gonna be awesome you know but uh um but yeah el nino bonito um so uh myself uh uh big mike Aguirre, uh, and uh, Adam Hookie are hanging at a Jake's Leg concert, you know, like kind of just like hanging like right outside where they, uh, you know, check people at the door and such, uh, or right inside, I should say. And you know, they have that uh, little mural of all the oysters and shells, and it's you know, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a nice piece of artwork. Well, uh, we start hearing this like crashing sound, Uh-oh. and and. Uh, Adam looks over and uh, uh, sees what's going on. There's some like uh, drunk lady and her boyfriend. They're like, like she's she's with her boyfriend, but she's like taking these off the wall and she's spiking them on the ground, you know. And and uh, you know, Adam Adam has some history at the Oyster Bar, so he took you know personal offense to this, you know. Sure. And so and and he he went in uh, uh, defending the Oyster Bar with all he had and everything. So like, uh, uh, so he's getting in an argument with this, this girl. Um, and, uh, the, the boyfriend is, uh, you know, kind of talking to like, like big Mike is like the coolest person during all this, you know, big Mike's like, just like, eh, you know, he's like, I still got a smile on his face. Like, yeah, you know, it's not cool though. Right. You know, <laughs> you know, he's being, he's being the way he's being and everything. But like, uh, while Adam was inside and the girlfriend were inside, like arguing with management or whatever, we're out there and this dude 
says something like, man, I'm about to go out to my car, get my gun, and take you and Pretty Boy out here. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, like, okay. Uh, they get kicked out, you know, like, also, you know, Brett shows up. Right. <laughs> Brett, Brett shows up and uh, uh, takes care of things. And, um, and the next day on Facebook, like, uh, uh, I posted on Big Mike's page, like, hey, man, when... He was calling one of his pretty boy. I think he was referring to me. <laughs> so, right. so El Nino Bonito, the pretty boy. Uh, <laughs> and
but yeah, that that was the song I I kind of you know, the the name came later, but uh, the uh, uh, the the song itself was just like you know we're playing a lot of sec we play a lot of second lines as the funky butt brass band you know for special events and occasions or whatever and uh, and I wanted to have us kind of like a little bit of like a Latin second line kind of number and uh, wanted it to be simple easy to remember and and uh, so that yeah there you have it it's a, it's a, a, a again grateful to those guys at Funky Bud for listening to a song I wrote and being open to playing it for me. So it's, yeah. Yeah. You know, how well, so obviously I just, uh, saw you guys doing it live at mm-hmm. the Fox. And like I said, and you guys, I think the live version you guys did is slightly longer than the re- the recording. Yes. Uh, you guys like to do the, a little, um, stretch those, uh, jams a little, you know, the, uh, yeah. the solos and stuff a little bit. And, mm-hmm. uh, obviously, uh, there's a, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of nice because everybody gets a part to kind of shine in that song. Yeah. And, uh, but you, you obviously gave, uh, in the middle, there was a big drum solo from Ron, which was, mm-hmm. was always super cool, uh, Absolutely. watching, watching him, uh, getting funky on the drums. But, yeah. uh, there's also a great, uh, sousaphone solo in oh. there. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, was one of my favorite moments. Like, you know, see, you don't get a, a whole lot of sousaphone solos. So, yeah, and uh, as you as you pointed out, definitely not at the Fox. All right. Yeah. So, but uh, um, but but yeah, yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know the role role of the sousaphone in that band is obviously the bass, and uh, you know, uh, bass bass players don't often get a time to shine. So I'm 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 lucky when I do. But uh, you know, I love being like you know because because I first started off as a trombonist and uh you know it's definitely a you know it's it's a frontline instrument and everything can play melody and it's it's still supportive but it but it it, it has the, that capacity a little bit more where uh I can kind of shine a little bit more but on the sousaphone uh that's a you know bass instrument I'm part of the rhythm section and uh so I'm I'm there to do a job and mm-hmm. uh and I love doing that job with Ron because it's it's, it's like you know, people like complain like, "Hey, man, I didn't, I, I didn't see the front of your face." It's like, "Well, I'm freaking over here and making sure everything's working with Ron and everything." Right. <laughs> you know, that's why you're having a fun time is because you know, uh, you well, know. I think you know, that's exactly what I said. Uh, uh, Stacy made a comment like, "Why doesn't uh, Cody face the audience?" And I was like, "Well, he's part of the rhythm. He's allowed to watch Ron, watching what he's doing, make sure that mm-hmm. he can, you know, stay in rhythm with him and stuff." So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's so, lots of there's lots of little bits of communication that you don't really see out front between right. Ron and I, but there's like, you know, they, man, we've we've learned to read each other pretty well right. <laughs> these last last couple of years. So, um, so did yeah. you write the song like that? I mean, or did it kind of evolve into that? Like, how how close is uh is what the recording we heard? Uh, it's it's pretty close. Uh, you know, like on the recording, yeah, we we don't stretch out as much solo wise, um, and uh, and such, but. Yeah, when I first wrote the uh, first wrote the song, it didn't have that whole trading with the drums thing. You know, like after the sousaphone solo, there's like a couple lines that you know set up Ron to play his solo. But like, uh, um, but it's I mean it's it's pretty close the concept mm-hmm. and everything. You know, so uh, uh, but you go in, you know, of course you go in with an idea and and then it turns it might turn into something different. That's sure. that's the cool. You know, the flexibility of the band is yeah. is important for us to grow. Right. Right. So. I mean, you got all-star players and then you got uh mcintyre you know helping also and he's the best man he's one yeah. of the best yeah so, so. uh yeah, i'm a big fan of jason i uh and i know you guys uh you know obviously the reason you keep going back to record over there yeah yeah he, he's he's fun to work with and i've had the pleasure of working with him a couple times over the over the pandemic as well so i mean like he's uh you know, yeah, he, he's he's great. He's brilliant. Sawhorse Studios, you all got to find that and yeah. and uh, uh, like that page or whatever, you know. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Jason's. I mean, he's he's super funny. He's musical. He's so musical. I I I still haven't. I, I'm pretty sure I've heard what instrument he plays at one point. It's either guitar or piano. But like, um, he's so musical all around. You'd have no idea. You know, like what is you know what is that guy's instrument? All I know is that he's a great musician. He can he can uh, point out like little things that you didn't hear. He's like, why don't you try it this way? Or you know, he's super quick too. You know, so like uh, as far as like resetting a track to, if if we mess up, you know, so <laughs> or or like, hey, uh, Jason, you got you got some of that studio magic in there? You know, <laughs> fix some. You know, he'll he'll fix your mistakes and such. He's he's great at that. You know, yeah. so yeah, man. 
Well, you can uh, come out and see Funky Butt Brass Band live. Uh, you guys got a couple of dates on the calendar, including yeah. um, a uh, show at the pageant. Uh, yes. Which will be on uh, May 21st. Yes. And uh, and so that's an indoor one. If you'd rather uh, come outside and uh, enjoy the uh, nice uh, spring day, you can catch Funky Butt at uh, Mount Pleasant Winery at yep. uh, on May 29th. So both two great options. Uh, the pageant show, I just went and saw, actually I saw uh, Adam and uh, Brian over there with uh, with uh, John Henry on yeah, Saturday John night. And, and Sleepy Rubies yeah, uh, and, yeah, did man, a great so job too. So It was, and uh, and uh, Aaron, of course, too. So yeah. uh, seeing uh, some of your uh, your bandmates uh, getting to play with, uh, with all them. and it, It's hard for any show to happen that, you know, those guys aren't involved. <laughs> Right. You know, they're like the, they're the, the, for higher, higher guns, you know, yeah. for, for sure. <laughs> they, uh, it was, it was cool. And I, it was my first time being back in the pageant since, uh, everything. And, and, uh, and again, they're doing it right too. So, uh, is, uh, you know, it was just nice kind of having that glimpse of normalcy again, you know, it's like, uh, for real. Yeah. We, we, we did like a little stream there last summer, like in July, I want to say. And, uh, yeah, they were, super professional and and uh you, yeah so it, it, pad, people at the pageant also awesome to work with <laughs> yeah yeah uh yeah i think john made a joke about uh about the guys uh you know that they're they're on, on a tour of the best uh theaters in st louis or something like that or, or something you know it's like uh for this weekend so they you know getting to play the fox and pageant back to back and mm-hmm. so uh but yeah, man. So you, uh, along with uh, Funky Butt, um, you uh, you also are uh, you guys are kind of uh, reviving another project that's kind of been uh, on hiatus for a little bit. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, you mentioning uh, Ron Sykes on drums, you will be uh, the Back Pocket Trio, which yes. uh, also features uh, Al Holiday. Absolutely. Uh, which, uh, I love this, <laughs> I love this band. It's a, it's a fun project, uh, for sure. Uh, and, uh, but so it's going to be cool to see that band back out there, uh, playing on a, on a stage again. Oh man. You know, like, uh, we had a crazy gig up in, uh, Troy, Illinois at, uh, Schmitty's. And, uh, <laughs> we were like, I mean, like the sousaphone was like scraping the ceiling, you know, it's really close and, and you're, you're right in there with all the people drinking and stuff, but they, they just, they ate it up, you know, cause it's, you know, that, 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 I mean, that's, I think that's just a, that's a good combo, combo of musicians, but like, uh, Al Holiday just knows how to bring it with whatever he does. And, and I just love how he doesn't leave anything on the table. He just, or he puts everything on the table, which is the, which is a chain. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that that Al goes all out when he, <laughs> you know, no matter the gig, no matter how small or how big it is. Yeah. And it's one of the things I love about him. And uh, you know, his 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 compositions and stuff like that. We do a couple tunes by him, and and then we cover a bunch of stuff, you know. And sometimes people just shout something, and we're like, "You guys think we can handle that? Let's do it." And then it's like, you know, I, I, that that's exciting. You know, to because you know I, I love Funky Butt and I love uh, it's it's a very polished you know at times thing. You know, we do a lot. We rehearse more than any other band I'm in. Uh, Back Pocket Trio is a little bit more flying, you know, <laughs> flying by the seat of your pants and everything, and and see what happens and like, hey, learn this for tonight, and you know, it's 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 a it's a it's a little bit more loose, but uh, uh, I think yeah, if y'all come out on uh, May fifteenth, you'll enjoy yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, you guys are doing like a uh, taste, what taste of Maplewood? Yeah, taste of Maplewood. So that's what it's uh, called. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, so I'm guessing uh, was that a you know? It's like some kind of like street park? fest kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, uh, you know, I, I know there's an event on Facebook. You can yeah. probably find the info on it. But yeah, it's a. That sounds fun. Fun bring to be playing with that group again. Yeah. Bring a lawn chair, <laughs> get some get some good food, and yeah, hang out with some right. some tunes. Yeah, Funky Butt's back, man. Uh, back Pocket Trio, Sophisticated Babies working on something. I'm sure uh, uh, I also got another group with uh, uh, Ben Reese called the the Unity Quartet, which is also a Ron combination. Yeah. <laughs> like Ron and I and uh, uh, Rob Nugent and uh, Ben Reese. Yeah. Uh, uh, ben being another former Funky Butt guy and everything. So it's, yeah, man, it's, 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 this, is, this is an exciting time. And uh, I, can, I think I can 
kind of relay that from all the other musicians that you know the the calendars are filling back up and uh you know we hope you all come out and see us <laughs> <laughs> you think uh back pocket you think you'll ever re- like record with that project or you guys like just uh you think that's just for fun and you know i i, I wouldn't I would, I would never say never on that uh right now it's it's I don't think there's any like originals kind of flowing through there that haven't already been kind of fleshed out by Al's band right. or for, or by funky, Butt. uh, so like, uh, you know, anything's possible. I would love to record with those guys. Uh, yeah. there's kind of a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of back pocket trio on, uh, um, a couple tracks on the onward album, uh, specifically, uh, such a night, the, uh, uh, Dr. John tune and everything. Yeah. So like, that's, that's Al, Ron and I, and, and uh and tim on guitar of course in the rhythm section but like uh it's a uh, yeah that's that's a little bit of a back pocket trio right. connection right there you know so <laughs> yeah man yeah i love watching now play he's just uh like you said earlier he's he's just uh an incredible talent and a lot of fun and uh, but yeah he's uh yeah. uh so hopefully uh you get to see his band on stage sometime soon too because i i'd love uh, to see them too yeah <laughs> um wanna when I'm speaking of the Dr. John, he does a, he did that was, um, years ago now, but he did a mad dogs and Englishmen, uh, oh. tribute and, uh, yeah. uh, with, you know, and it kind of, it wasn't quite, you know, Dr. John, but, uh, it was, but he, uh, it was just fun to see him kind of channel somebody else's material and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and get into that. And like, and, um, it was, uh, you know, it was all just an incredible night, you know, just, uh, I do remember that show. I was I was there. We might have, we might have bumped into each other. I'm sure at one we point. did. Yeah, but, man, it was a lot. That was a loud show. I remember right. that about it. I'm getting you know, you know, uh, uh, clues that I'm getting older and older. Man, that was a loud show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah uh, he had like a bunch of guests too. He had like Hooky and yeah, uh, and then he gave his uh, you know. Uh, Backup singers uh, uh, gave Ina Cook and Hillary. Hillary oh, Fitz yeah. uh, went up, both went up and and uh, sang their tails off as well. You know, so right. I mean, that, you know, he, he's just got a, he's got a good band, man. That's a solid yeah. group. <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, like I said, I'm I'm just excited, man. I'm like uh, like I saying, the calendars are filling up. Things are uh, you know, people mm-hmm. are announcing tours. All these uh, big festivals are happening or at least are scheduled you know so hopefully uh, yeah hopefully we're back at it man but you uh is that your your uh dmd your it's my it's my diet mountain dew and the green screen is picking <laughs> up look at that there i am right there that's me <laughs> i like Co- uh the, the cody henry show there you the cody go man henry <laughs> show that's uh <laughs> Speaking of Cody Henry show, that's one of my favorite features was, uh, you know, when I, when I get to tune in and uh, what, what Cody's drinking for the night. And, uh, <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, 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 yeah. At a time, like I had, you know, so, you know, put yourself in the, of course, yeah. Put yourself in the situation where at the pandemic, I don't ever drink at home, Shane. Like, uh, I only drink when I'm out with funky butt or, or whatever the gig is. And, uh, so, Maybe a couple times, me and my wife had bought some hard liquor, and that was just like sitting up in the pantry for years. I, and it's like it's nothing worth saving too. It was like a six dollar like plastic <laughs> jug of vodka, you know, and you know who knows what brand. Uh, the cheap, but the cheapest liquor you could find. And I was like, I'm gonna get rid of all that liquor up there and everything. So I started like pouring myself glasses on the show, and and uh, it would usually be. Um, like sparkling water, you know, like bubblies or whatever, sparkling water, LaCroix with, with whatever was mixed in amaretto or yeah. vodka or, or, uh, tequila or something like that. And just the worst things I could have ever <laughs> put, put in my mouth, <laughs> you know, just like, like, Ugh. So what was I thinking? You know, All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, uh, I don't know. I was, uh, he, you describing that kind of took me back to, uh, pr, you know, pre uh, twenty one when we, you know, we weren't able to buy uh, alcohol. We would, uh, we would be like, just goofing off, me and a bunch of my buddies, and we would start like going through the fridge and like pouring like shots of soy sauce and pickle juice and <laughs> just like random things like uh, out of the fridge and like trying to like 
you know, all right, here, try this. And like, you know, like it was like our drink, <laughs> drinking game kind of thing. It's but, like rabbit on super troopers drinking the, <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> you got to open your throat to drink the, the syrup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we would do that. Like in a, the man drinking like a shot of soy sauce is just, Oof. yeah, pure, pure salt and like, <laughs> oh man it was, uh, black uh, blood of the earth yeah. <laughs> big but, triple on china reference yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was but, a lot of fun though we had a lot of good times uh doing dumb stuff like that uh, but it just again awful just awful yeah yeah man uh <laughs> but yeah like uh uh you know it's it's kind of cool that that you know had that i got the the thing back you know it's <laughs> there <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of cool that it happened. I I have uh I would have never thought of doing this, but uh, you know, pandemic hit and like, you you know, like uh, it was May fifteenth, I think, is was like the last gig I had played. It was with uh the Plyadors at the at Jazz of the Bistro, and I was supposed to play the next night at Jazz of the Bistro with a big band, and that that show got canceled. And it's like okay, you know, uh, and then like. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, all the calendar d- dates like start, lo- you know, dropping off. Like within like a week, I I knew there was like, like two or three, three grand that was just like never coming back. And it's like after that, I stopped counting. And uh, and then you know about a week or so in, you start getting antsy. Like what can I do to like keep playing? And right. and uh, so I, I I made like a post on Facebook like hey I think I'm gonna go live and make people guess bass lines that I play on sousaphone and and then uh you know people started tuning in I know you were there and and mm-hmm. uh, a bunch of other friends from other bands and such that I'd been playing with and and uh, but yeah like the yeah concept of the show is I play bass lines on the sousaphone and ha- uh, that's how it started at least uh, playing bass lines and having people guess what those are uh, I've kind of made it a little bit easier now Shane I've been playing more melodies than bass lines yeah. so <laughs> every now and then I'll go back to to Cody Henry show classic and we'll do like all bass lines but uh um yeah it's 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 uh, uh makes it a little bit more universal a little bit more uh <laughs> friend fan friendly and everything if we do the melody so yeah so I've been but uh but yeah it's been a lot of fun uh and uh and then out of that I've also had a couple other streaming show ideas like where I you know just like record myself like uh you know going into garage band and just like kind of record trying to make a track and everything or uh my friend Joe Drexelius and I have a little talk show we do uh on there where it's usually talking about nerdy things or playing games or whatever so yeah but, uh, uh, I think I tuned in one night. You were some mystery science theater. Pro, talk pro, and... Yeah, yeah. We we've definitely done a mystery science theater three thousand episode, and yeah, and uh, yeah, that brought a bunch of people that had never seen the show, and you know, because it was a uh, you know, there's just there's a lot of fan. That's like a definitely has a cult following, yeah. right? You know, <laughs> so I yeah. I was like I'm like kind of weird with that show, like um like the the i don't i didn't watch the series as much mm-hmm. uh but the movie is one of my favorite things like this island this island earth yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great and so like i remember um i don't know maybe I, I might even talk to you about it but like a buddy of mine uh jeremy we grew up uh together and uh, we used to hang a lot at his house and his uh neighbor david was just like a couple years older than us and he would but i don't remember he i remember that's where i first watched the movie was over at david's house next door and like and i was like you know just hooked it was, made me laugh so hard and we spent so many so much time just quoting lines from that afterwards like it was like one of the original uh quotes for us you know like just uh of course you know it was stepbrothers and 40 year old virgin or whatever all the movies that were quotable <laughs> you know as we got older but like yeah that was one of the first ones where like uh it, just so many dumb lines but it was really like just me and my buddy jeremy that were like got it nobody else really was watching mystery science theater you know in our you know friends and stuff so i'm trying to think of my favorite quotes from that from that specific one i think i think one of them is like him like he's like sleeping and then like they wake him up and he's like football practice yeah <laughs> like he <All> ran, <laughs> you know he just like comes out of his, a nightmare right. or uh, uh yeah he's what uh he says something like uh Wake up, honey. We're we're at grandma's house, and yeah, we're, put, we're, put your shoes on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> put your shoes on. We're at grandma's I like, house. Uh, I like that. 
Uh, I'm going to crawl into his sock drawer and sleep, <laughs> sleep for days. For days. <laughs> or the uh, like, when he's in the cockpit and everything, and he's like, he's like got like oh, the yeah. you know, he's like, should we should we be seeing this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a, I mean, yeah, it's great. Like, uh, so that's your favorite. My favorite is one called uh, Jack Frost, and we definitely talked about on that on the Cody and Joe show. But uh, a lot of these are on uh, on YouTube. So, like, if you've never checked out Mystery Science Theater three thousand, uh, I could definitely recommend that one. Jack Frost is my favorite one. Yeah, a uh, <laughs> Russo Finnish co production, and it's like you know badly. Uh, English dubbed and it's it, it's just funny all around, man. Just it's like a, a lot of like fairy tale creatures and stuff like that, and it's great for for those three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Uh, but as I noticed, um, the show's uh, been evolving, which is kind of what was fun yeah. about it at the very beginning too. Uh, you every episode, you you were figuring out what worked and what didn't work, and you were trying new ideas and you were getting better with the technology. Cause again, like all of us were, this is all new for a lot of us, you know? So, uh, but you were, uh, you know, the, you had different themes you were trying out and different things. And then, um, but I see, I saw the other night, uh, I was watching, uh, you had, uh, Kurt Brewer on, you're bringing, uh, yeah. bringing in some guests to play along with you and stuff. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've actually got a I got a guest this Saturday. Uh, um, I don't know how soon the podcast is coming out, yeah. but like uh, uh, with uh, Ivan Basil and uh, Ivan's a dude on this uh, group called Socially Distant Fest, right? That, that I uh, ended up joining because of Adam Hookies, because there's like kind of a a part like where people started kind of going back out. <laughs> you know, and like enjoying themselves again. So there's less people watching the show. And I'm like, hey, I'm, my number's kind of hitting, you know, hitting rock bottom right now. And Adam's like, hey, why don't you check this out and everything? I think you'd stand out if you did your show on there. I'm like, okay. So I did. And, 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 and man, like, uh, I've met some of the nicest people on Socially Distant Fest and, and, uh, uh, the creators of the group and, uh, have kind of taken a liking to me. And I've, uh, whenever they're doing like new things on the group, they, They'll ask me for some advice every now and then, but uh, but yeah, one of the uh, people who streams over there quite a bit, a guy named Ivan Basil, we're gonna do like a like kind of an electric night. I think he's gonna do all synthesizers. I'm gonna do a might get my pedal out for my sousaphone. We're gonna have a good time, man. There it's gonna go. be it's gonna be fun. But yeah, like uh, um, Shane, would you have any interest in in uh, guessing some bass lines? <laughs> Let's do it, man. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you can play at home as well, right? You know, so yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, Oh yeah. Oh, See, you just happen to have a sousaphone there. I just happen to have a sousaphone. So, so yeah. Will he ever get the R fixed on his? No, I pr- probably not. I need to like get a new R. <laughs> it's, it's starting to peel. The black vinyl is starting to peel. Uh, another shout out to Joe Drexelius because he put that Y on and. You can kind of see it's way too close to the K. <laughs> so, thanks for that, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, all right, man. Uh, let's see. How about let's let's do a I've got plenty picked out here, but let's do five of them. I got like eight. Let's do five of these eight. And this is uh just random. These are they're, they're yeah random, no theme. Yeah. And uh, let's see what see if we can get get anything out of here. So how about start off with an easy one? Okay, here All we right. go. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh another one bites the dust or aka another one rides the bus another one rides the bus yeah that's yeah. right I, I would often on the sh- you pull yeah i've done a weird al sh- uh, themed show where uh you have to had to give us the answer the weird al answer yeah. but, I, but i think anytime i do like a song that's been covered by or parodied by weird al I'll, I'll be like, okay, there's two answers to this one. Right. If you guess the Weird Al version, you get a point as well. So it's, it, it carries as much weight as getting the original one right. So good. One I, uh, out of five. That's, how, that's, <laughs> where, that's where my brain goes. I start singing the Weird Al versions all the time. I, I, Amish Paradise all yeah. the way. Like Adam Hookie and I both played in a group uh, that was uh, led by Tony Barbata called Slam for a while. We'd play out like a train wrecked Westport and you know all these kind of bro bars and such such and and we'd be it'd be like 90s and 80s hip-hop r&b uh and uh 
and we we'd be doing uh, Gangsters Paradise, but like me and Adam would be in the back of the horn section, like sing. <laughs> uh, well, uh, how how how's the start change? Sing, sing the first line. I'll know like more than that. Uh, you know. When I uh, walk through the valley where I yeah. harvest my grain, I think yeah. I look at my wife and realize she's very plain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, right. so we'd be back there like singing that. I want to say there's like one or two other ones that that <laughs> they were weird out parodied songs as well. But yeah, man, funny funny stuff. Classic. Uh, okay, let's see here. Here's one from this one's from a movie. Okay, uh, I mean it's a, it's on its own. It's a badass song. Uh, <laughs> This one might be a little tougher, okay? Shane? I don't know. <laughs> that was definitely uh, tricky. Shane, you are absolutely <laughs> right. You know, it doesn't matter on the Cody and Show. I'll, I'll, I'll keep people. Okay, we're gonna wait ten. We're gonna figure this out. Even if it takes like a solid ten minutes for this point, yeah. we're gonna figure out that it's you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> there it oh, is. Shit, Only, man. I was. I bet everybody was like screaming at their. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like you know, uh, maybe when we got to the chorus on that one, it might have made a little bit more sense. But yeah. maybe the bass players out there were like, yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, man. Uh, playing along uh, uh, to the show, like some of the people in your uh, in your chat are, are like crazy fast, or or my connection's that far behind because that's how I used to get so frustrated. I'm like, you like would you know play like one note and they already had it like or something for me. And yeah, they had had to have been ahead of you, but like I, I, it must be something to do with the inter- inter- their internet connection, or maybe they're right. on a phone instead of a computer, or vice versa. I have right. no idea. Which is why we had to, <laughs> because like people would be answering in different places. Like, hey, on my screen, it shows this person yeah. ahead and everything. So like, that's why I had to make it like you have to like the comment that comes yeah. in first on your screen, with hopes of being able to crown a winner of the point. You know, your friends are pretty good at it though. They you got a bunch of them that are really talented at guessing yeah. bass lines. It's guitar players are super. <laughs> the guitar players are all super good. It seems like uh like Kurt Brewer has won a ton of games. Ryan Wazaba. Uh, has has won a ton of games and and uh, Ethan Jones played four games and won all four of them and I think Brian and Kurt might have been at those games and then he retired <laughs> <laughs> and you know shout out to Ethan Jones he wrote the uh, he wrote the uh, uh, opening theme song yeah man for me and all I did was I added sousaphone to it but he he wrote a freaking song for it man it, it, it was like oh man just like so grateful and what a what a great guy you know so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. Here's another. Here's an easy one. You're, you're gonna get this one probably right away. Here we go. Is it? Yeah, you probably you probably is, got it. I think you got it. But is that uh, whip it? It's Whip It, yeah. <laughs> the freaking Devo. Yeah, I, I was pretty oh, sure. I, I just didn't want to. It's kind of waiting to see it come back around. And uh, okay, let's do it. Let's see. Okay, let's see if we can get this one, Shane. Think this is another one associated with a movie. Okay. All right. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you. 
You know what? Based off that, I don't think. Damn I'm it. sure I do, but <laughs> shit. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> How about that? There's a little bit of the chorus. I don't know. Not, nothing uh, was jumping out at me. I'm. Uh, Damn it! I'm well, sure I... w- whenever that happens, uh, I have to. Uh, um, let's see. Never mind. I don't have it. I was gonna say I'm gonna play the nobody got the answers thing, but I couldn't. <laughs> I could play the real show thing. There, there's the real show thing. <laughs> you can't. You can't hear it on your side, but it's it's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the uh, no, it, it flashes up. Nobody got the answer, and then it's like shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, don't it's simple minds. Uh, don't you forget about me oh, from, uh, right. Bre- from Breakfast Club. That's right. yeah. I, thought, I thought I thought all the haze at the front might have sold it, but uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, you got one more in you? Sure, of course. Okay, one more for you, everybody. Uh, it's a pretty good prize right. today, right? Yes, the prize is uh. Uh, this <laughs> this light bulb <laughs> that happened to be sitting close by. All right, I'll uh, mail it to you. Yeah, <laughs> let's see. Okay, so let's see. You got you already got the three. If it's if it's NPR rules, then you've already you've already won the the you know the the answering machine message. <laughs> but uh, here's one here's one more. This one has two answers, but not because it's Weird Al. All right, here you go. And then it's that over and over and over again. <laughs> what do you think, Shane? Um, uh, featured featured on the movie The Wedding Singer. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> See if that helps. Well, yeah, so, well, all right. Maybe uh, is it Rapper's Delight? It's Rapper's Delight, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, remember the trailer, the old yeah. grandma doing her thing. <laughs> that a hip hop, a hip hop. <laughs> there it is, man. Look Boom. At that. Rapper's Delight. Okay. Well, congratulations, Shane. I'll be sending you that light bulb. Uh, <laughs> four, four out of five, right? Four out, four out of five, man. Good yeah. job. Let us know. Let let us know. Uh, how can they get? Uh, do they like? Like how, how do you put this out there, Shane? Is it on? I know it's on Spotify and and podcasts, but like I'm yeah. trying, I guess they can comment on the podcast app. So, sure. So uh, post your answers uh, and hit hit enter before you. <laughs> on each each one, you're gonna have like a million comments on there. But like, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> see if you can get it before Shane. Oh, yeah, man. man. That uh, that's a fun that's a fun idea. And like, and I like that it's like I've never seen anybody else, you know, doing doing it with a sousaphone like that and stuff. So. I would yeah, say yeah. there's like uh, the whole uh, name that tune, you know, as a, with a full band and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, just to doing a bass lines with a sousaphone is uh, was a unique twist on it all. It was a uh, kind of a kind of a forced <laughs> right. forced uh, twist for sure, you know, everything. But uh, but yeah, you, you know, uh, through the show, um, uh, uh, I've met I've reconnected with people that I haven't been friends with in a long time, and then I've. Uh, you know, so like, there's some people that I went to high school with that like were tuning into the show and kind of got back in touch with them, and now I play a bunch of games with those those folks, and then uh, um, you know, it's brought me closer to uh, Darren Bergfeld is another friend of mine that's been on there quite a bit, and uh, uh, he he played the Grinch on on our Funky Butt uh, Brass Travaganza, <laughs> you know, like he he uh, after after uh, 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 Josh Watler where he he would come out. And, uh, you know, during the Grinch song, and then he'd steal the trombone from Aaron Chandler and play a solo on, you know, because he's a good, he's a great trombone player, yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, so, like, yeah, there's there's a lot of people that I, I either wouldn't have met because, again, all the socially distant fest people, uh, you know, they're like over, you know, they're all over the country, you know, mm-hmm. Ohio, uh, uh, Virginia, Atlanta, or whatever, you know? So, um, so it's really cool to have, uh, reconnected with some people and 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 uh yeah. and uh you know meet new people so yeah i got a buddy gabe uh was a part of his uh he does a podcast uh he, well he's, it's 
he started uh, his own Twitch channel and uh, doing Stone Dog Entertainment on there. And he, we, I, we were doing a podcast uh, weekly, and I was kind of helping him launch that. And um, oh, I remember and, that. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Remember, I tuned in for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Good. So we kind of, I helped. Well, originally it was on YouTube, and then he kind of figured out, uh, started learning about Twitch, and we moved it over there and, and doing it live on Twitch. And it was, uh, but you know, he's definitely kind of was just like what you're saying he's kind of found a home and he's been able to connect with uh a lot of people around the you know world and uh it's so it's kind of cool that the internet you know you're able to make new friends like that and stuff yeah these people you you never even met you but you have a, a common interest and stuff through this uh through the sdf and all that so yeah yeah absolutely man so <laughs> uh but uh no that's uh, that's a lot of fun man i'm that's cool uh that's uh, working out for you. So if you can, uh, we have the, the Cody Henry show, uh, Facebook page, you can follow along there. And, uh, what you usually do two nights, right? You typically. Yeah. Yeah. I try to do, uh, uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays are kind of like the, if nothing's going on those are right. the nights, but like, uh, but now that the calendar is kind of filling up again, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, I've been kind of thinking about the future of the show, you know, and, uh, it, I'm not sure if it'll just be kind of a whenever I can or, or, uh, uh, or just you know i don't think i'm gonna ditch it you know i don't think i would ditch it for like a while or anything like that but i, I would like to probably just do it when i can yeah and everything as the work keeps come as the work starts coming back because because again like i said you know it's it's a, a a different group of people and it's it's it'd be fun to stay in touch sure well and it's like i don't know like i'm doing the podcast like i don't know I, obviously sometimes the podcast gets put on pause because i get real life you yeah, know, starts taking uh precedent, yeah. you know. So uh I absolutely agree. Um, yeah. you know, and I'm like uh but it's it's always I if if I'm ever like taking a break for about a week or two or whatever, uh I'll start getting kind of antsy, you know. It's like and it's just like yeah. you, even though you're you're getting creative uh with the music and your other various things you're doing, it's like but it's something fun about just doing this uh silly show and having fun have, with your friends and stuff. So yeah, it is kind of a uh, kind of you know cre- uh, scratches that creative itch and stuff. You know, allows you to have yeah. some fun. Well, I'm sure whenever you you take those little breaks as, as well, you start getting like messages from friends like, "Hey, where's the show, man?" You yeah. know, like you know, come on, you owe us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you know, that's it's it's nice to to feel wanted, <laughs> I guess you know, and everything. So it's a uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I I often uh, you know joke because there's. I'm like, well, there's 900 uh, other episodes out there that uh, of the show. You know, there's plenty of uh, back catalog they can, you know, <laughs> revisit and stuff. So yeah, come on now. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, no, it's uh, yeah, I uh, I have a ton of fun doing the show, man. I still, uh, yeah, you know, I may, actually May is uh, marks uh, seven years of the show, so. Oh, congratulations, uh, man. Yeah. That's, a, that's I mean, man, and also coming up on a thousand shows, you know, yeah. <laughs> before you know it. So that's right. a, that's quite a, mm-hmm. I've, I haven't been keeping track of how many episodes I've done of, yeah. of Cody Andrews' show, but it's, it's, it's definitely under a hundred, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I only, I started numbering them just mainly to keep track. It's a lot easier to, instead of trying to figure out which one it was or how many it's been or whatever. And just, For real? Uh, you know. There's no uh, real reason for the numbering, but you know, just helps keep everything consistent. Yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I was you know one of those moments. I uh, kind of had uh, actually it was nice to sit and talk with you today because I kind of hit pause uh, the other day because I uh, my I had to put my dog down. And, yeah, man. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry to. It was yeah, I... super sad. Sure, man. Like uh, and. Uh... And, and like you, I, I had to put down uh, my uh, my basie dog. He's a little. Uh, I, I I had two terrier poodle mutts, and uh, right before I moved from Godfrey, because uh, my wife had gotten a different job and everything. Right before we moved from that, uh, uh, his sister had. We had to put the sister down. You know, she was only like four years old, and 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 man, that was so sad. But then like this time, you know, this was also super sad because it's like you know we've been with this dog for 11 or so years and and uh you know it was just it was just time and Mm -hmm. and uh but but yeah man that's a you you know their family it's uh it's super hard so yeah i uh well bell i had we were together uh 
17 years, uh, may, may would have been 17 years here. We've mm-hmm. been, and, uh, so yeah, she, she had a hell of a run for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, it just kind of, I got a nice card in the mail today, um, from the vet and yeah. And, uh, and that kind of hit again. I was like, Oh man, so, got when, little... I, when I read that rainbow Ro- or rainbow bridge thing, the first yeah. time I was in tears, man, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. uh, Oh my Lordy. They, yeah. They're, they're, they're so caring though. That's you know, those, the people that are at the vet and everything, they're, they're super cool. He's like, you know, and give you everything you need and everything it's obviously sure. they know it they know it's a tough time and i i can imagine that's a stressful job you know yeah. for them oh, so yeah. yeah i mean they get attached to you know uh they see them even if it's only once a year and stuff but you know it's uh it's tough but uh it was uh you know i don't know what will happen out of this one uh but so this i had we uh seven years ago we had to put down our we had a pit box mm-hmm. or a a red nose pit uh named Dalbo and he got mm-hmm. stomach cancer mm. and uh I had to put you know had to put him down and and that was uh you know just brutal um yeah man it's tough right after that we get you know of course everybody was trying to be supportive and helpful like hey here's this this dog needs adopted and all this stuff. and I'm like not like you know just trying to replace my dog and you know nothing Yeah really... that's yeah that's a tough thing to kind of push on somebody after yeah. they've been through this you know like you wouldn't if there was a, you know, a person that you lost or something like sure. that, you wouldn't be pushing yeah. like, yeah, here's a, you know, but I get you, a, you know, that'd be awful. Yeah. We get a call from our vet though. Uh, and they're like, Hey, somebody dumped a pit puppy up here and she needs a home. Mm. And, uh, so we went and met her and left with a puppy and, oh uh, wow. And that was, uh, Java who we've had now seven years and, mm-hmm. and, uh, but, and she's just been awesome. It's been it was uh it was just kind of a crazy thing how it kind of uh, all came together like it did uh you know this according to their story like said somebody just dumped this puppy some somebody brought the dog into the vet because they didn't know where what else to do and but somebody apparently just dumped the dog over the fence in their yard and oh my gosh or something like that and I was like and then man what's wrong with people huh all right yeah <laughs> so that's, that's what we were thinking and then all of a sudden we we brought her you know she's but she's a wonderful dog. Yeah. You know, thinking about some of the happier moments with this, you know, it's like, think yeah. about like the, you know, it sucks that those people did that, but, but now this, uh, this dog's got a good home yeah, and, uh, and all, yeah. it, it worked out. It worked out great. Um, sure. um man, one of the, uh, <laughs> the, the things I think about when I, when I think of Basie, if like I need a good laugh is like, um, we, we were new dog parents, right. You know, and I remember coming home from, coming home from work and it's a detached garage and and the back you know so you you get out there'd be the back patio that's probably about two and a half feet off the ground or something like that and my wife opens the the door for the dog to come out and greet me and stuff and the dog has uh like this like hoodie on <laughs> like the you know like he's a little poodle terry muddy they put this put this like the this jacket on the on, yeah. on the hoodie on and and the hoodie's pulled over his eyes so he's just walking towards my voice i'm like hey buddy how you doing i didn't realize his his eyes were covered and he just like like <laughs> like just went off the patio like i'm like oh no you know <laughs> but man they were yeah those were those were fun fun dogs they had he and his sister you know they had the they're like little poodle terry mutts with a curly curly tail and like they'd be running you know doing zoomies around our backyard and everything and their tails would be flat on the ground and it's, it's yeah you know, man, the funniest thing we'd put in a pool and everything. It's like you know, let the dogs swim in the pool and stuff like that. It's just, and you'd barely dip them, and they start doing the all right. You know, like out of instinct, they're like, I don't want to be in the water, but <laughs> I'm ready to. I'm ready to brave it. You know, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, yeah, the the good moments, right? Oh, you yeah. know, it's great to think about those. Yeah. Now we um we had a lot of them for sure, man. I I actually I was just uh kind of laughing uh, there was uh there was this woman named Lila who used to live across the street from us and uh uh bell would go over she would always like kind of on a nice summer day she'd be sitting out underneath a tree in the shade and had her you know iced tea or whatever sitting out there kind of just enjoying the weather and um and then we take uh bell out to you know go potty and she'd uh uh she'd always kind of roam over there across the street and kind of 
uh, and Lila would always be like, there's my girl. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Belle would kind of like wiggling her butt across the street and stuff, go visit yeah. her and stuff like, Hey, you know, and then like, uh, you know, all right, here, rub my belly and just like flop over <laughs> next to him. So, uh, see, there, there's, there's the good story we need. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, we, I mean, it was just like, so I just got to, uh, you know, put a big smile on my face thinking about that the other day. It was like, yeah, you know, we, uh, we definitely had a lot of fun together. And, um, but, uh, yeah, there, you know, it was, it was tough, man. Monday, uh, was a really hard day. So, uh, but, you know, it's life. That's, uh, the un- uh, hard part about it like it's uh but i like i'm i you know like i said i feel good about that she had 17 years together so a lot of people aren't uh feel pretty grateful for that yeah absolutely man that's a long that's, full life absolutely and you guys were i'm sure great you know you, you made her life super happy and everything yeah. so we got to think about that as well yeah. right <laughs> um but yeah man well let's talk about something uh a little happier uh sure man then uh we got we do have uh one more tune we wanted to throw in here the uh, to share today on the show from uh yeah. from the new funky butt onward album um and this is a, a song called for the marks and mm-hmm. you said this uh you co-wrote this with uh our good friend uh adam hooky yes um yeah like uh Ad- adam and i uh um we're, we're thinking about what are we, what are we going to record on the new album? So this is actually the most recent recent song that we had written to to end up being recorded. Uh, a lot of those other songs we'd probably been sitting on for you know a year or two, uh, and. Um,
so so yeah, we're over at Adams and we're just like making a demo, like you know, trying to cut a demo and everything. And and uh, uh, I came up with this little bass line. Adam came up with a couple of the the riff things over it, and and uh, it was a lot of passing back and forth. Adam and I, I you know, I, I, you know, I feel like we work together very well <laughs> and uh we've written a couple things uh even since you know but it's like a lot of passing back and forth and going into garage band and like you know musical typing on the keyboard and stuff but like uh the the song originally is like kind of a placeholder is called i'm over it because one of adam's neighbors that i don't think they live there now was just basically like having a fight with his girlfriend or something like that and it's just like him slamming doors like i'm over it <laughs> and he's like you know and he's throwing things at his car i guess he was moving out <laughs> you know maybe he didn't know he was moving out uh-uh. uh you know so we'd be writing the songs and then you'd see like you know as any neighbor would do like through the blinders you know right. and like over there <laughs> like just like what the hell is going <laughs> on out there super loud and everything and and yeah uh but then eventually uh uh <laughs> we're in a carpool with uh uh me adam aaron and ron and uh, came up with the title for the marks, you know, because uh, we're all uh, somewhat of wrestling fans, and uh, it was, you know, supposed to mean, you know, be like a, I guess, like a super fan of a wrestler, uh, or you could also see it as a carnival, at a carnival, as like somebody being marked different on their hand, as they, you know, they're admitted into the part because they might be an easy person to cheat out of some money. Huh. <laughs> so, so yeah, we got uh, for the marks here, and uh, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. It's, Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. You what? Uh, what's what's your uh, uh, what era in wrestling did you get into? What uh, it was uh for me it was late nineties, early two thousand. So it was when I was in high school, uh, which would have been like like ninety nine to two thousand two or so. And uh, man, uh, so I guess it was like Attitude Era. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I first started watching it. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin was huge before that, but I didn't really, you know, like I, I got in like when he was, he must have like been injured or something like that. And he was taking like months off. He'd only do pay-per-view events. And uh, so my favorite wrestler at the time was Mankind. <laughs> uh, I, I I loved the, like, you know, the the personality of him and everything. He's always, you know, super funny and, and, uh, and quick and uh and then of course you know he's just like a you know he's a maniac he'd right. take all this pain and stuff and you know it was through that like i you know was looking up like old videos of him like wrestling in japan and stuff like that and you know just doing all this insane stuff with like barbed wire and tacks and stuff like that as yeah. cactus jack with uh terry funk and uh so i mean uh <laughs> yeah what can i say man like mick mick foley was definitely one of my favorites and yeah. yeah, he. Uh, I think he's on cameo now, and he does like, uh, dude, love, and uh, you know, and stuff. Like he does like some of the characters on, you know, as, and so. It's, I bet uh, he does. I, is there is there a is there a cameo for Sako? I bet there is. I, I bet if you, you, pay, you pay the right amount, I bet he'll do whatever. You know, so. <laughs> man, we we uh, uh, Funky Butt used a, a cameo to get a, an introduction on one of our Christmas shows. We had Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like, it's like, oh man, Cameo, what a great idea. I remember we were like heading home from like a gig from Kansas City. It was just like an hour was like, you know, taken up, just looking up like, oh man, we could have, you know, we could have Gilbert Gottfried or we could have, uh, uh, oh man, like uh, I'm trying to think of some other wrestlers that were on there at the time, you know, it's, yeah. it was like always like kind of like, uh, you know, you could have have Kane, yeah. <laughs> you know, which I guess he's not really known for talking, is he? But, right. uh, <laughs> but uh, you know. that, uh, uh, Gabe, I mentioned he, uh, he got, uh, the Godfather to do an intro for his oh, show. Pimp uh, and 80s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Man, dude, I, I watched, I watched, uh, uh, with one of my boys, I watched, uh, um, like the Royal Rumble from 1992. Somehow that ended up on my like homepage, uh, on, uh, YouTube, I'm like, yeah, I'll watch a whole Royal Rumble. That sounds like fun. And some of the characters that showed up, I I had no idea existed, but were super funny. Uh, one was a, a guy called the the Repo Man. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> and it's like, I mean, he's got like the classic like Hamburglar, you know, 
black eye, ma- black mask around his head, and he's like he's got like some chains and stuff like that, you know, like, and he's like coming in and and uh i think it was jerry the king lawler was on you know announcing and he's like oh he's smart he's pacing himself he's like you know because he's like sneaking into the ring while it's a royal rumble you know so for those of you who don't know right you know they come in every two minutes i think a new wrestler comes in and and uh so by the time you know the potential is with 30 or 40 wrestlers that you know you could have you know five or five to ten people there at a time and so he's like sneaking in it's like it's like oh that son of a bitch look what he's doing he's cheating you know? God almighty. <laughs> get him the hell out of here and then the other one that came in was uh uh oh uh Irvin Ir- Irvin R. Scheister, whose initials are IRS. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> and he's got like a business outfit on and a tie. And it's like ah, oh. and it's it's great because like the uh, you know the crowd knows what's up. You know, even though I hadn't watched around that era, you know, like it was it was them booing these characters. <laughs> <laughs> it's like boo, it's IRS, yeah, Texas, and you know, but man, yeah, before be- before that, it's probably like. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, late eighties or something like that, you know, like uh Bushwhackers and Hogan sure. and stuff like that. You yeah. Know? I was big on I got so you're you're talking a lot of WWF, but I was big into uh WCW. We watched a ton of uh WCW Nitro, um, me and my brother, and uh, you know, of course, uh the now that was the era when a lot of them uh jump ship and went over to yeah. WCW. Uh, so you you had the uh the outsider show up uh you know in the in the nwo and all the uh you know that whole um see so of course uh uh kevin nash scott hall randy savage hogan sting uh you know just yeah like, uh, everybody Ho- Ho- hollywood was, hogan yeah <laughs> see see I, I i i was definitely not a, a huge fan of wc i mean i, I would always watch yeah, Raw on Monday nights, but I think Nitro was like seven to ten, and Raw was like eight to ten. So I would, uh, you know, I'd, the first hour I'd usually tune into some WCW and see. Yeah. But but mainly because like uh, I had. Did you ever? I don't know if you had an N sixty four or not, but there's a WCW versus oh, yeah. NWO Revenge. Oh yeah, was Classic, one of the man. one of the best wrestling games I had ever you know ever played and everything. Super easy to get, and I played as Rey Mysterio Jr. But I think I had like. Uh, like palette swapped him to where he was like wearing this crazy yellow outfit, yellow and black outfit, and I renamed him Pikachu. Uh. <laughs> you know, like, it, but like, it, there's a lot of characters on there that I only knew because of that game. You know, like right. Goldberg, Goldberg and DDP and 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 all that. But what a that was a fun game, man. So yeah. you, you had that, you had that as well. Or? Oh yeah, I actually, uh, I had. Well, of course, I had it uh, originally. Um, but, uh, a while back I actually bought, um, uh, I still play my 64 quite a bit. Uh, I I prefer, uh, the 64 and, you know, and like old school video games more than I do like the, you know, PS4 and whatever, five. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I hear you. I, uh, so I bought a cartridge on, uh, with, it's just like, uh, I guess it's essentially just, uh, ROMs on it. Uh, but it's, uh, every, in 64 game on one cartridge That's and uh nice. yeah so i it's pretty fun like i went in recently like i kind of deep dive through some old games that i really didn't um didn't own as a you know as a kid or or an adult even uh so like i i we didn't have um donkey kong because like you had to have like the actually I had to go buy the the piece because you have to have the expansion pack to play donkey kong yeah, so, it's like Donkey Kong sixty four, right? Yeah, I, right. I, I do remember having that. That was just like a big, yeah. That, that whole game was a big fetch quest, man. It was like find all the yeah. bananas for these five different characters, and but, it was like it was just a time waster. <laughs> that sure. one. <laughs> but it was fun to like go back and you know revisit. It's super hard. It's it, it's a crazy difficult game, but yeah, it was uh it was fun to kind of revisit that and uh, but uh, yeah, it was uh. It was, it was a couple of them on there. Obviously, some don't hold up as well, but uh, mm-hmm. it was still a lot of fun to kind of the the party games for the N sixty four. Like, uh, um, so f- with my friends, it was WCW versus NWB Revenge. It was um, Goldeneye. In which case, I was so I was not good at Goldeneye, man. Like, uh, my friend James always wanted to play on like License to Kill, which I think was like you get hit once and you're dead, you know, and yeah. everything. And he was super good at the game. And I, I, you know, 
<laughs> I'd have to be odd job just so so I I had a a little bit of an advantage. Sure. He'd still ruin me there. Uh, Star Fox, the uh, four player like battle, yeah. <laughs> is it was a lot of fun and and uh, freaking Super Smash Brothers, you know. So like the original Super Smash Brothers and yeah. Uh, so yeah, man. <laughs> Super a lot of good fun. times there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A lot of, a lot of Friday, Saturday night. You know, yep. staying up till you know, what we thought was late back then, sure. right? You know, and and uh, yeah. I, I, I think when I busted it out, I was like, you know, I think I had a surge, and I said, you know, I made a joke. <laughs> yeah. I made a surge. joke about. Uh, I made a joke about you know, mom's bringing home some you know pizza rolls and Doritos and you know just like <laughs> total '90s flashback. And, um, Dude. It was, it was like, for me, it was, yeah, it was like, yeah, go, go into the kitchen around midnight and just like, like putting things in the oven. Right. Uh, we, we'd make, like, this is, sounds really gross right now. We'd make like fish stick sandwiches, you know, like get, get like, you know, it's like Wonder Bread and two, two fillets of fish and put cheese on it and ketchup. <laughs> and it's like, okay, this is, we've made something great here. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, rest- refilling up on Mountain Dew and, <laughs> <laughs> and ready for the ready for, man you think about the stuff you eat back then what the stuff you eat now it's yeah. like what was i thinking <laughs> uh, yeah uh, fun stuff uh, man yeah there was um uh nba hang time is another one i spent a lot of time mm. playing like on there also it's just like um you know baseline leaner you know just like all the uh <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, essentially nba jam before uh but not so man nba jam that was a that's a, that's an odd one that you could it's 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 odd that you could put a password and playing it play as the president yeah right <laughs> yeah cuz who are some of the other characters like what was it was weird al a character on nba jam or am i thinking uh, of another yeah, it was like could, another nerdy maybe. it was like a nerdy like guy with long hair and glasses but it might not have been actually the, weird al yeah there was a lot of like people that were like uh developers and stuff like they would they put themselves in there and it was probably one of the developers that yeah. i'm thinking of but like uh yeah there's those two there's a couple others but like yeah that man the, and of course being on like the you know the sega genesis and the super nintendo it has like that you know really kind of crappy audio for the voices you know yeah. from downtown yeah on fire and stuff right. like that yeah man man well, i've been uh asking a couple of questions uh if you got some you got you got a couple more minutes I got a couple more minutes, man. Yeah, yeah man. What I've been having fun asking some of these questions and uh, uh, let's see, get your take on some of these. Um, uh, all right. Uh, we, the day comes, we have a, uh, a Cody Henry biopic. Who who would you like to see play Cody Henry in the movie version of your story? Oh, man. Oh, who would you, play? You ever get that? You look like somebody or anything like that? I don't think so, but yeah. uh, who could who could play who could play me? Uh, and I'm trying to think of somebody that's like like newer. <laughs> Man, I'm 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 at a maybe that guy that plays Spider Man could gain some weight <laughs> and and, uh, and jump on his uh, was that Tom Hiddleston or Tom, uh, I don't know I, I can't remember if that's him or if that's the guy who plays loki either way uh <laughs> there's my there's my throwaway answer <laughs> toby Mc- yeah no 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 not toby mcguire either jeez yeah, that's tough well that's the thing uh, i think there's been a couple of them uh now, which i guess they're all gonna be in the new movie i think yeah yeah like they're making like a like kind of like a spider-verse live yeah. action spider-verse kind of thing uh, so i think that could be interesting all like it's gonna be like that meme come to life you know where they're all pointing at each other you know it's like all the uh spider-mans John C. Riley could play me. There you go. <laughs> They'd have to like uh, you know make him a little bit younger, I guess. But <laughs> freaking John C. Riley could play me. Yeah, we got some CGI. You know, make him look younger. Yeah, man. So, I mean, Dis- Disney could you know do anything now, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that would be fun. I think John C. Riley uh, he can do about anything, man. That guy's a. Who, who would be playing you, Shane? Oh, in, in a... I'm in the movie too. You're the, well, yeah, you're, this specific part is this, in the movie. <laughs> this scene, this podcast is going to be in the movie? This is where everything changed for Cody Henry and things started <laughs> looking up, man. <laughs> uh, geez, I don't know. Um, 
Maybe, um, maybe, uh, shall be Jonah Hill or something, uh, before he lost the weight. I can see Jonah Hill. Jonah yeah. Hill could do it. Um, <laughs> maybe. He, he's not, he, I'm a little taller than him, but yeah, they could, they could fix that though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Seth Rogen. Yeah. Like a Seth there Rogen. You go, Seth yeah, Rogen. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can, can you do the Seth Rogen laugh? It's like, eh, eh, eh. How, how is it? It's like, it's right. a weird laugh, isn't it? Like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm stoned enough to do that laugh right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it at, yeah. at all. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Uh, what uh all right so what about like um a uh dream dinner this one kind of came up um i've been talking about a bunch but like uh dave grohl was on stern talking about a went to a, uh paul mccartney's house and hung out and had dinner and stuff with him and i was just like thinking of like what would be a dream dinner for cody henry like if you could invite like three or four guests over uh and hang out for the night and stuff like who are some of those people that you would like to have in that conversation? I think it would be fun to to talk to um, uh, Jeff Lynn from ELO. I, I love Electric Light Orchestra, and uh, it's definitely my favorite band right now. I'd love to talk to him. It'd be cool to talk to someone like Beck, I think. Yeah, man. Um, and um, uh, they might be giants. There you go. Those there you go. Those, those three those three groups right there. Uh, and uh, get both Johns in there, and John Lennon and John Flansburg, or the yeah. or they might be Giants. Get both of them in there, uh, especially yeah. especially those last two. I think like like I almost bought an accordion because of because of they might be Giants, you know. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, this is hard. I think I was down at Music Folk. I'm like, this is this is just too hard. I'm gonna <laughs> stick to the trombone. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that'd be a fun that'd be a fun conversation, especially. For for the for the writing, you know, because right. I I just love their their work and and uh, um, Beck is definitely, I feel like of the of the three is like evolved probably the most, you know, he's like kind of like a, the Miles Davis of pop music. He just never looked back, just kept like you know progressing and everything, you know. So yeah. uh, it's w- crazy is how much uh, his catalog spans i mean it's like you know he's just all over the place with his with his music yeah yeah you know like uh the the album that he he won uh like album of the year was that like morning phase or something like that it's like uh me and adam both went and saw that uh live at the at the pageant uh when he was uh you know uh promoting that album and everything on tour and um I wasn't, you know, like it's, it's to me, I, I, I like, I'll listen, I'll listen to it here and there, but like, uh, but for me, the, the Beck album that I keep going back to is, uh, Midnight Vultures that was released, uh, 1999. So again, it's like that, mm-hmm. you know, impressionable set of years and everything. Sure. Wrestling in 64 yeah. games, in <laughs> 64 games and, and, uh, uh, and Beck. <laughs> I'm with you. Like, I think there's some, a lot of that too. Like, to, there's a lot to that because, like, Mine would probably be Odele because that's like yeah. the first one I was introduced to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, S- it, same for me. I mean, man, same for me on Odele. Like, uh, you know, because that was the stuff that was and, and Mellow Gold, I guess we're both on. Is that what the, what is? Yeah. Is that what the other one was? The first one? Uh, I want to say. Yeah, I think that sounds sure. right. Oh, yeah. But like, but but uh, but for me, like like the, the, the Midnight Vultures thing was because there was horns yeah. on it and everything. And, and so like around, also around that time, I was listening to a lot of ska music because it was just like, oh, stuff that's playing on 105.7 The Point that has horns in it. And that's, you know, that, that had a, you know, True. definitely had an impact on me because like I, you know, played trombone in the high school band and everything. It's like, oh, I can, there's a chance for me to play, st-, you know, like I yeah. went to college, I went to college, uh, uh, for to to learn jazz performance and get that degree because I thought it originally because I I thought it would make me a better ska trombonist <laughs> which is like ri- ridiculous but like uh um you know because at the time I was playing in one of my old like high school garage bands at the time the Yellow 5 yeah. but like uh Shout um, out. Yeah, shout out to the L five. Go to the stlpunk.com, everybody, <laughs> and uh, and look for us there. Uh, <laughs> man, we played the creepy crawl, and we thought we were hot shit, man. You know, <laughs> but like, uh, but 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 yeah, you know, like so that era and everything of of Beck was had an impact on me because because of, of the horns and everything for yeah. sure. Well, I took my brother. Uh, 
my brother-in-law, uh, Sean, to see Funky Butt for that same reason. He played mm. saxophone in the school band in high school awesome. and uh, in college. And um, and I took him to watch Funky Butt just mainly to so- show him that, hey, like uh, it doesn't have to stop at marching band. You know, you could Not if you uh, if this is something you want to continue pursue, uh, you know, you can make a career out of it and and continue to do it uh, after high school and college and stuff. So, yeah, man, like uh, you know, that's. That's one thing that's kind of cool about Funky Bud is that we do we get invited to colleges to come out and play for like you know uh, for the band program or whatever or and 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 at high schools you know just so it's kind of cool because we can we can show them like hey you know you can, yeah there is a future after this and uh, I, I can all, I mean especially for our the tuba players out there that uh <laughs> that you know like what the heck am I gonna do it's like well you know the the brass bands are kind of coming back you know sure. so it's uh there's a lot of love for brass bands out there and and uh, uh you know young blood and 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 all all groups like that that are that are playing live and and uh touring the country so it was, yeah uh yeah, I, I can see where that could ins- could inspire it's, inspire some use. So we're hoping to do that on our end as well. You know, trying to get get more bands popping up because more brass bands in St. Louis, I think, would be a would be a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> there's man. not there's far far too few. You know. Yeah. What? Um, uh. All right. Uh, so we we uh we also get a, a Cody Henry action figure. Hmm. What would be um three of your accessories uh, to go with your your action figure okay uh let's see Tr- definitely trombone and sousaphone i'd yeah. say um light up sousaphone light up sousaphone yeah the sousaphone lights up and <laughs> the uh <laughs> oh man what what would be the last one uh you know well and i'm trying to think of something that's not going to be an instrument maybe a Maybe a fishing pole, maybe a puzzle, like a tiny yeah. puzzle. <laughs> we, did, we did a puzzle on the, the your first uh, podcast, right? Yes, uh, yeah, uh, the first podcast with you, uh, uh, Sophisticated Babies. We did a uh, Adam like had this idea. Hey, we're going to be putting together a puzzle while you're yeah. recording us and everything, so we have something to like right. focus on because because Adam and I like we, we'd be staying staying up super late. I I I'd, it's funny. I'd go over to his place because uh, you know I live in. I've always lived outside of St. Louis, you know, anywhere from 45 minutes to a half hour out. And uh, so if I had a gig uh, that night, you know, maybe I'd be done at 11 p.m. or so. And I'd go and hang out at Adams because I didn't want to drive all the way home. And, uh, you know, maybe would allow me to sleep a little bit more. And I'd have a gig the next morning somewhere close to St. Louis. So Adam would, you know, say, like, hey, man, anytime you want to come over and just crash, you know, so you don't have to drive all the way back home. You're, you're welcome to. And eventually got me a key and all that, <laughs> you know, but we'd be, we'd be, you know, I, I'd go over the idea of like, Oh, I'm going to get some more sleep and everything, but we'd end up staying up to like five in the right. morning doing puzzles and listening to music and uh, singing along with music or, or, or maybe putting like, you know, episodes of Simpsons, family guy, Futurama in the background while we're, we're putting together, you know, puzzles and stuff. So it was yeah super fun, you know? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, man. What's uh, what's a dream duet or collaboration that you uh, you'd like to see for yourself? Oh man, um, that might go back to to one of those people I I mentioned playing it or, or having a, having the dinner with. Uh, uh, but if I had to pick one between all of those, I think it would be a lot of fun playing with uh, with a uh, um, with Beck. You know, being like. Being Beck's bass player on sousaphone yeah. would be that'd be a dream come true for sure. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that would be uh be a lot of fun. I think he's just an interesting guy. I think it'd be fun to to meet the man. Yeah, yeah, uh, man. Like uh, the, the when I saw him at at the pageant and everything, there's you know. He he's got like some kind of like you know I don't want to say like he has some kind of aura about him but he has like some, definitely has a he has like this energy like whenever he does like you know make eye contact with you you're like oh <laughs> 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 you know he's just like this is a powerful dude like you know he just like you know commands the stage and everything and and you know the band is so so stinking tight you know and uh, yeah I, I would love to be. A, be a part be a part of that experience yeah 
you uh you, you talked a lot about um cartoons uh mm-hmm. you know uh, obviously you in the mention and uh family guy and all, all the stuff simpsons and uh even uh uh do you uh do you find yourself doing any celebrity impressions uh and, and impersonating any of those voices do you do any voice work at all like that you know not as much as i i'd like as I, i'm really interested in voice actors you know like right. what they you know i've and i've had a couple friends that have done some voice acting uh you know but uh yeah following all these voices like especially like a uh, like Futurama, like you take someone like Billy West who does yeah. the voice of Fry, and then he also does. Uh, eventually, he did Ren and Stimpy, but right. it, originally he was just Stimpy, and uh, he was the the Honey Nut Cheerios Honeybee, yeah. you know. And so you know, but like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I love that. I mean, I guess I can kind of do like a <laughs> like do a little little Peter Griffin yeah. laugh, but like, no, 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 it's a. Uh, 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 <laughs> or, and not not anybody I can think of right now. You know, yeah. as soon as as soon as we're done recording the podcast, I'll be like, sure. "Oh, wait a second, <laughs> You know, but uh, the, uh, holy crap! Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of them. Like, I'm pretty good at like mimicking them. I don't know that mm-hmm. I do like good impressions or yeah. anything. But if I hear their certain voices, like I, I'm pretty good at like recreating and and kind of mimicking it like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, there's uh, there's some of them are just fun, especially. Family Guy, like St. Peter, like uh, um, like Herbert, you know, like getting the getting the uh, you know, the whistle in there and stuff. Oh, and oh, you, oh yeah, yeah the, that's the that's the old guy with the yeah. popsicles in his basement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> got some popsicles. You know, like oh, yeah. I don't know, I can't even do it right now, but it just uh, it's just because it makes me laugh. But the way he gets that whistle in there, like it's so perfect. Uh, it, it is, it is good. So. Uh, is, is that is that a Seth MacFarlane voice, or I think, I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know for positive, but I'm pretty sure it is. Like he, he's another one that has a very you know recognizable voice, and he shows up on a bunch of stuff, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but my buddy Ryan does a real good Herbert, and uh, <laughs> and he call he like leaves me uh, voicemails like sometimes, and and just in these characters, and they always make me laugh. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's pretty good, man. Yep. Yeah. Oh, maybe a uh, maybe a murder face from uh, from a uh, Metalocalypse and or a couple of Metalocalypse characters. I don't know if you ever watched that on Adult Swim, but like yeah. the uh, 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 let me see here, like uh, Squizgar, like the audience ems a fickle's mistress, Toki. The audience ems a fickle's mistress, <laughs> or uh, ah, I might as well just go and kill myself. You know, freaking murder face is is. Uh, there's just not enough songs out there about taking it easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's some, there's some. Uh, uh, <laughs> he's it, one of my favorite scenes. He's like, he said he he bought like a songwriting for dummies book, you know, and he's like, you know, it's got like the black and yellow on the front and everything, and he's like reading. He's like, he's singing. He's like, uh, a million miles from nowhere. <laughs> Fish, a fish with tits, titty <laughs> fish. <laughs> you know, he's just like, I love that. I love that show. Uh, it's yeah. one of those shows that, like, they they gave it like six or seven seasons, and then they did a movie. The movie is amazing. There's some awesome visuals and the music, of course. You know, it's like all the uh, Brendan Small's music and stuff. Um, the the movie was super entertaining and then there's like a big cliffhanger at the end and they were supposed to get an eighth season and it never got uh oh. it never got the it never got it, or it never got the eighth season yeah and uh but i think there's like kickstarters out there trying to get it going and stuff so yeah i, I would love to see it concluded <laughs> yeah i mean you think like all the different platforms that uh these shows survive on you know it's like we've had all sorts of them uh kind of get rebirthed on netflix or you mm-hmm. know whatever uh amazon and you know different things so um, yeah yeah, and some was, some of them are kind of hit or miss too, you know. Yeah. Some of them like it's like, eh, maybe you should have stayed canceled. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but yeah, there's some good ones too. Yeah, man. Uh, well, I'll have to check that. out. I don't think I know anything about that. I'll have to. Me- me- yeah, man. Metalocalypse. I mean, it, it's 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 great because, like, especially you being a music fan, I think you you dig it. But like, uh, um, it's it's there's a there's just a lot of like. Uh, funny little music related jokes and and uh it's about a uh 
pretty much about like a, a a metal band that like they're so popular they're like the eighth largest economy <laughs> like like they're the eighth largest co- economy in the world and and so like there's like a government like board that just is just there for metalocalypse you know like they talk about like you know what you know <laughs> how should we proceed you know they're 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 selling advertisement for a uh like a coffee company or something like that <laughs> it's a it, but it's yeah lots of lots of goofy situations and yeah. and uh and, and really funny characters another another one of those shows that has like the same voice actor for for all of them so like when brendan small smalls does like a, a live metalocalypse uh which the band is called death clock when he does like a live death clock uh performance at some kind of uh Comic Con or something like that. He he does acts out sk- skits uh, with all the characters, all the five members of the band. So he's just on the microphone. And he's like he's doing going through. He's you know does the really low voice for the lead singer. There he's like you know oh I'm Toki I'm, or I'm or I'm, I'm I'm Pickles I'm the drummer and he starts doing like you know the 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 kind of Minnesotan voice yeah. <laughs> or whatever you know it's, it's it's funny man it's wild. Well, you had me at fish tits. Yeah, fish tits. So, You're gonna, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, How could you go wrong? Speak. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, it's it's funny. Like, yeah, the fish tits thing that <laughs> reminds me of. Uh, uh, help me out, the gentleman that uh, does the uh, uh, did the art, the mural uh, artwork at the the beast. Uh, at, uh, sorry, why was your? Oh yeah. Uh, um, is that Jason he, or? Yeah, it's Jason yeah. Kill, Killer Napkins. Yeah. Uh, there's a shout out right there. Go to Killer Napkins yeah. Facebook page. Uh, uh, he does like he's done the artwork in like uh, I know like in the inside of the bathroom at uh, uh, the gramophone. <laughs> if you go right. get a good sandwich and you're waiting and you go check out the bathroom, it's re- it's great art. Atomic Cowboy stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah, one of the things he draws is like a fish with tits. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I wonder if that's that's a uh, influenced by Metal Hoops or not. Maybe I don't yeah. know. Uh yeah, he's a uh, very talented man. Like I really uh like uh, seeing his work around town. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so um but yeah, well man Cody, this has been a, a lot of fun tonight, man. I'm really glad we oh. made this happen. Yeah, Sh- Shane, thanks for yeah, thanks for taking the time, man. And 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 again, I yeah, appreciate you having me on to to talk about some stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's just uh like I said, man, this is the show is just uh always a good excuse to hang out with your buds and uh yeah. t- and talk and have fun so I'm, I'm glad uh i'm glad we could do this tonight and talk about uh what you've been up to and uh yeah hopefully we'll we'll uh, we'll do it again soon yeah man I, I i said this recently i think there's gonna be like a live music renaissance here in st louis and i bet before you know once things are safe and everything it's it's just gonna be you're gonna see a a big boom of uh of live music and yeah. and all that stuff and yeah and I, uh I just, uh, you know, I'm I'm so pumped and ready for it to come back around, and you know, obviously more people are getting their uh, vaccines and everything, and mm-hmm. oh, we're doing everybody's doing what they got to do. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm just I just wonder like it, how like if like uh, the, how how this is going to impact the future. Like I feel like it's there's a permanent change that's going to be made. You know, it's like just some people are just like. I know people like even just get uh, like anxious looking at like, you know, old concert footage and stuff with pe- seeing groups of people, 20,000 people in a, in mm-hmm. a, you know, on a venue or, you know, stuff like that. It's like, it's, it's totally changed the way people are going to look at live entertainment, yeah. especially Ma- that of large gatherings like that and stuff. And yeah, it makes you wonder what, if that's going to, that's probably not going to come back as quick, you know, that's, right. uh, you know, uh, but, hopefully sooner than later, but yeah, yeah that's yeah, I, thinking but, about that. I, I'm with you. I'm like, I can't wait to, you know, just be on Bob on the Bob patio, getting sweaty, dancing all night to, uh, <laughs> you know, funky butt and having a great night and just, uh, you know, maybe having a couple Bud Light limes, uh, you know, and not, like not 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 at the oyster bar though. They don't carry those anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> I had to found a I had to find a new fruity beer for me to drink. So now it's purple. <laughs> now it's purple haze. There you go. <laughs> uh but yeah no those are some of my favorite nights though man just hanging with you guys there. oh thanks man appreciate it yeah it's it, it's it's so fun playing at the oyster bar and it's it's definitely our home with uh with funky butt you know like that's our home base yeah and uh you know so the people that come out and say hi to us is it's, it's all great it's, it's it's a good place to like put on a 
a cover it in brass set, you know, yeah. do like do a whole set of Huey Lewis or something like oh, yeah. that, you know, and just well, you and, guys, uh, uh, well, let alone you guys, uh, you have a, a song about them uh, on the record, uh, but uh, there's also what do you guys uh, squeeze in a shout out? What was a uh, I forget the you did a cover uh, Friday night and you uh, oh we did well we did um uh MU three thirties law. Yeah, maybe maybe that maybe that's what you're thinking of. Uh, or? I was thinking, there was one, but it says something like going to the bar. But it, uh, Tim said, I think he yelled out "oyster bar" and stuff instead. Oh, it, it was uh, uh, um, uh, "Keep on Smiling." Oh yeah, uh, there. is the name is the name of the tune. And yeah, uh, what Willie? Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. That's that's exactly what it is. Yeah, uh, I was thinking like, well, maybe it's one of these like same because we did we do Emmy three thirties law, and then we also recently uh, we didn't do this at the the Fox, but we. Uh, Put it back into our rotation. We do a uh, kind of like an instrumental, an instrumental uh, Latin uh, version of uh, "Jump Right In" by the Urge now. Yeah. So, so hopefully, you can, hopefully, we'll get to play that for you soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. But uh, I just thought it was a uh, a fun little, t- you know, like I, you guys took a little creative liberty liberties with the uh, the lyrics there and uh, able to absolutely you know, shout out to Oyster Bar. Yeah, ab- yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, but yeah, all right, buddy. Well, uh, again, yeah. get plugged in with the Cody Henry Show on Facebook. Follow along with Funky Butt Brass Band on there. Uh, visit the website for more dates and uh, that vinyl and uh, shirts and everything else. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get uh, some sophisticated baby dates coming up. And you can also yes. catch Cody with Back Pocket Trio uh, coming up. So uh, it's going to be a, a fun summer, man. I can't wait. So. Can't, can't wait to, yeah. as well, man. We can't wait to yeah. see you in person again. <laughs> Absolutely, bud. Well, All thanks, right. Cody. All right. We'll see you, Take man. Take care, everybody. Bye.